So this is a GitHub repository for a robot named Tiago. I was working on this during European Robotics League competitions. So this repo contains code for all three components of a typical robot. It has RGBD camera to collect the images in real time, which build the vision system. Then the robot uses these images to make the decisions like object detection, object tracking, object classification, you know, path planning, scene understanding, etc. And lastly, you perform the actions based on the decisions you made by controlling the driving mechanisms or a robotic arm to pick up the objects. And in order to make all of this work, the languages like Python, C++ are used in addition to some other shell scripting languages like Bash Script and Talks. So if you're working in a robotics domain, it's most likely that you'll be writing code for either of these three areas. Now, if you don't know what these are, then I would highly recommend you to watch this video, then you'll get an idea what I'm talking about. Now, getting started with everything might be just too much for a beginner. So the question is, do you need to know Python and C++ all together? And the answer is absolutely not. I would recommend get started with Python first. Again, you don't need to know everything about Python. Uh, as a matter of fact, I made a list of bare minimum things you need to know about Python, which will allow you to get started with the project as soon as possible. And obviously, you'll learn more advanced topics as you, you know, go further in your project development. The benefit of this approach is that Python is easy to understand. You can knock it off in a week. Uh, second, it's really great for prototyping. And lastly, you can use it for more advanced projects in the future like, uh, you know, deep learning, machine learning, data science kind of thing. Now, where does the C++ comes into the action? So let's say you develop the prototype and it's time for deployment in the real world. And that's exactly where we need C++ skills. Most of the time, you'll be doing your development work on a laptop or a PC. Uh, and you're not going to take this powerful machine and place it on a robot. It's just not practical and it's very power hungry. And we all know how quickly these gaming laptops get discharged under full performance. So you have two ways to deploy it. The first is cloud and second is embedded platforms. So with cloud, what happens is that robot needs to constantly communicate with the cloud. Means robot will collect the data from a real world, send it to the cloud, do all the processing, cloud will send the data back and then robot will take actions in the real world. The problem with this approach is that the latency might be high. Now, latency is nothing but a fancy word which defines how quickly robot can respond to its surrounding. The higher the latency, slower the response of the robot, the lower the latency, faster the response. And as a robotics engineer, you have to make sure that the latency for your robot is like as low as possible. Now, when it comes to real world, we are deploying robots in areas where conditions are not very favorable and internet connectivity might be an issue. And hence, we as robotics engineers tend to go for a different approach, which means it's more likely that you'll end up working with embedded platforms like NVIDIA Jetson TX2, Xavier, Raspberry Pi, Neural Compute Sticks, etc. Now these platforms has the potential to do all the processing on board, which means no need to rely on cloud and robot is quite independent. This is exactly, you need to convert your Python code base into C++. Now why is that? So C++ actually gives you the lower level control, which means you can increase the runtime performance if you optimize your algorithms accordingly. One of the other important things is that when you use third party things like the cameras, the sensors, motor drivers, most of them are written in C++. If you are becoming a robotics engineer, you need to know C++. Uh, this is a deep neural network designed for object detection, classification and tracking algorithm running on this machine. It's just using a simple webcam for the time being. But if you try and take this and directly deploy it on an embedded platform, it will just crash. But if you optimize it as per the targeted hardware, in this case NVIDIA Xavier, and then deploy, you can see the performance is more or less the same. As a matter of fact, I did not see any drop in performance while maintaining 24 frames per second on the real-time video processing. So that's it. I hope it was helpful. Uh, it was more of a high-level understanding of what goes into the software world of robotics. We did cover a bit of an hardware also, but the key takeaway from this video is that if you follow what I said, you can immediately get started with robotics project. And that's all that matters because eventually as you start getting more hands-on in robotics, you'll automatically find your way from these basic projects to more advanced projects. And that's all for today. I genuinely hope it was helpful and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.